in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed the area of barrenness is the area of the absence of grace. The area where you have barrenness of results, believe me, it is the area where there is absence of grace or you have not activated the grace you have received in that area. Some of you love God, but the one cancer destroying your Christian life is you are owing everybody because you are perpetually in lack and want you have integrity but this area of finances has disgraced you embarrassed you brought reproach why keep suffering for nothing when there is a grace that can answer in that area are we together now yeah. the first thing is to admit that there is such a grace and that that grace is available in the economy of God but not yet present in your life or not yet activated in your life. There were graces that were not in my life years ago. I was still a Christian. I was filled with the Holy Spirit. I knew the graces were not there. I had to admit with all humility that those graces were not there. Then to contend for those graces with understanding and when they came, I knew they came. And now that I've learned how to activate and multiply them, mine is to obtain the doing grace, to keep walking in keeping with the principles that sustain those graces. And there is no power in hell that corrupts the testimony of a man who has received these graces in ever increasing dimension and has learned the dynamics of maintaining, activating, and multiplying it no God is faithful God is not just mighty he is faithful he has put these principles and everyone who obeys these principles you see that now when you obey those principles in truth the result speaks in your life it speaks so don't complain and say this area, this area, this area is not working in my life. I am telling you, once you see a bankruptcy of results perpetually, there may be demonic things, there may, but the chiefest explanation is that the grace connected to that result is not yet in your life or is not yet activated in your life. When you know this, like Peter, you will become by mercy a steward of the manifold graces of God so the wealth of your Christian experience becomes the result of your journey of picking the various graces that are needed for the profiting of your adventure so here's how it starts you got born again look at me you got born again empty void of anything full of the life of God but that potential has not been released. As you journey through humility, you carry wisdom, you carry favor, you carry speed. Are we together? You carry influence. You carry the grace that activates the gift of men. By the time you are five years in the faith, you are not alone again. You have outsourced many mysterious graces. This is what defines the quality of your Christian experience. Someone will meet you and say, we were born again at the same time. But did you carry the same grace? Did you activate the same grace? If the answer is no, then that becomes the explanation to your stuntedness spiritually. Apostle, the ministry is not growing. I sympathize with you and I understand sincerely. 
but I can tell you by grace, by mercy and by experience, there is a grace that is not at work in you, that is responsible for drawing men. That grace is called anakazo. It's a compelling power. It doesn't draw Nigerians, it draws men. Anywhere God gives a command, that grace answers. It doesn't matter where. Reinhard Bonke carried it. T.L. Osborne carried it. Maurice Sorulo carried it. It didn't just work in Africa. It worked everywhere God sent them. When you carry it, it works for you anywhere. Within your territory, outside of your territory. You see, it will look like you are the center of attraction. But the truth is that you are not that spectacular as a person. It is the grace. The people who listen don't even know what is drawing them. But it is the grace. Let that grace lift and you will be surprised that as much as you believe you are spectacular, you are not that spectacular. It is the grace that amplifies you and makes you such an object of awe. This is the reason why when God does the things that he does, we are wise enough to give him glory because our sufficiency is not of ourselves. <laughs> it is of God who has made us stable ministers not of the letter but of the spirit for the letter killeth but the spirit gives life are you ready for number three the third key for receiving multiplying and even activating the manifold graces listen carefully is impartation from the stewards the careers of that grace impartation impartation not from everybody impartation not from every christian impartation not from every man of god impartation not from everybody who wants to lay hands on you impartation from proven stewards of that grace impartation from proven stewards of that grace the grace that you seek the grace that you thirst for the grace that you hunger for that if added to your life you will now abound in that grace also it must be received from stewards who have that proven that grace is been tested and it's been proven to be present with them Hallelujah. As much as I'm an anointed man of God by the privilege of God's mercy, it is not every grace you need that I can impart upon you. I am on a journey myself to accessing certain superior graces that would be important for this ministry, for my life at a higher dimension tomorrow. Are we together now? This is the reason why God gave a distribution of graces across the body. There is no body who single-handedly answers to all grace as an individual. Only the Holy Ghost can do that. And because the Holy Ghost lives in men, and he operates that grace through men dimensionally, you can benefit from all grace. You should benefit from all grace. But until you outsource those graces, when God calls you, because of the nature of your call, there are core graces, foundational graces that are connected to your call. But in addition, it is your responsibility through wisdom to outsource other dimensions of graces that are profitable for your own life and your Christian adventure for your sake and the sake of those connected to you. When God called me, there were certain graces he gave me. Among them, favor was not part of them. Among them, speed was not part of them. Among them, influence was not part of them. There were graces that came answered at the point of my call. But the Spirit of God opened my eyes to see that God produced that limitation so that I will learn God on the journey to receiving those graces. Everything will not come at the beginning of your call. God will guide you. Something happens to you in pursuit of those graces. You will know God better. You will respect the formation of his economy better. If I had all the graces, I probably would not respect a Reinhard Bonke. 
I probably would not respect the sacrifice of a T.L. Osborne. I probably would not respect the grace of a Bishop Oyedepo or Papa Ia Deboye. But because of that limitation, God opens your eyes to see possibilities that are on earth but far beyond your current horizon. And then you pursue with hunger. You pursue with passion. You pursue without shame. Not human worship. Not self-worship. But it is how he works. He's invested in grace. His grace in men. They are called stewards of the manifold grace. Stewards, custodians, caretakers of the manifold grace. And when you seek and find, then you receive those graces. When God called me, the grace for long life was not part of it. But I knew that I needed to live long, not out of fear, but because the demands of my assignment and the people connected to me will need it. And I said, I must take the responsibility of pressing. Pressing. And when I found that grace, I remember that time, I returned to Zaria in a hurry and I told my people I had received an impartation of that grace supported by the truths of scripture anyone can wish you long life but only the person who has lived long can actually impart the grace for long life did you hear what i said anybody i can speak to your life as a man of god and it will work but the person you meet with is 100 years old 120 if he says kneel down kneel down you can receive my prophecy later, but kneel down. Hundred year old hands on your head. You are joking. Do you know how many things you need to survive to be hundred years old? And yet there are people on earth who are, are that old. And some of the people around them don't have the grace till the people die. They just know this man has lived long. Die now, let's share your assets. That's all they are seeing. Whereas someone else is saying, God, and the man who is 100 years old was a soldier. That means he fought wars and yet he did not die. He refused to die. Every time our father comes here, Daddy Onubogu, you see how I accord him a lot of respect. The man has lived long. He's about 86 now. The oldest that I know, I've met a number, quite a number. The people who prayed for me were about 100 and you've heard the story 136 36 136 when the wife of the man said she wanted to pray for me again i said pray oh please pray the mama led me to a room she said i should come we entered and she was showing me the photos of her husband that was the husband of her youth and when it was time to pray we knelt down the woman took off her shoes placed her feet on the ground and was shouting there for the next 15 minutes what do you think I was doing amen it must be so because I'm going to fly many times in this wicked world it must be so because there are arrows that fly by day, noisome pestilences, the wickedness of men as you rise. That grace. But I did not just go back to say, well, I fold my hands, an old woman has prayed for me. It doesn't work that way. So you go to scripture. Are, are you seeing how it works now? What has the Bible said? Now that the grace has come, how do I activate it? I shall not die, but live and declare. That's why I'm living and declaring. If you are not living and declaring, you may receive that impartation and something will still happen to you. Number two, I choose life. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. That's why you see I said I would not call my name, myself that, that thing in that hymn. Mm -mm. Because my words are not empty. I believe my words. So I will not be careless over it. Not words, my words. They are not empty. I know they carry power. That is the reason why I'm telling someone you are blessed. In the name of Jesus Christ, I say it upon you, you are blessed. I say you are lifted. I say help has come to you. I say doors open for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I say it again, you are blessed. You are lifted. 
help us come to you. Oh, let ministry be easy for you. You access resources supernaturally. Please be seated. Impartation. Now look at me. How many of you know that right from Genesis chapter 1, from verse 1, 2, and 3, the Holy Ghost was already revealed? But do you know in spite of his presence, every anointing that any man received in the Bible came through impartation. A, over 80 percent of the anointings that men received in the Bible came by transference from man to man and yet the Holy Spirit is the custodian of God's power are we together Abraham Isaac Jacob whether it's Joseph whether it's Moses and Joshua are we learning now whether it's Jesus and the disciples Philippians chapter 1 and verse 7 Paul calls them partakers of his grace partakers not partakers of my power partakers of my grace ye all are partakers of my grace a man can drink of the grace that God has given another like you bring your candle and you can light that candle from another person's candle and another one will not burn more or less you will not even know which one lit one. That's how it works. That's how grace works. It is the reason why from the abundance of that which we have received, we give freely because when you give freely, it does not deplete your own. No, it doesn't. If it depletes your own, you have stopped keeping the principles that fund that grace. It is not because you gave it that it depleted. The grace is inexhaustible provided you walk in keeping with the factors that sustain activate and multiply that grace now let me tell you something listen carefully i've taught you that the greatest hindrance and i want to say this the greatest hindrance that I have learned from scripture that stops men from receiving impartations is the heart condition of the people. The heart condition of the people. But more importantly, a heart condition of dishonor. Please listen to me. Listen to me. We're about to pray. There's going to be a mighty impartation in this place now. The heart condition, listen please, it is one thing for you to have proximity to a grace, a vessel, a steward of this grace. But there are rules to drawing graces from people. Are we together now? Among them, chiefest among them is your motif. Why do you want the grace? That question why must be answered. Why do you want to receive the grace for prosperity? Why do you want to receive the grace for signs and wonders? Man of God, why do you want the grace for influence? Why do you want the grace for crusades to pack full stadiums and theaters? Why? If you cannot answer the question why, regardless who is around you, and regardless whatever spiritual activity I tell you it is a major leakage in your spirit if you cannot answer the question why when I stood at that crusade ground watching Reinhard Bonke God sees my heart it was not just to make a name I was not just seeking to be a powerful man of God it was beyond power as I looked at that crusade ground I saw souls I saw people in need. I have read many times that there are more people on earth and very few people, the percentage of Christians. I knew that God was looking for more laborers and it would be an honor for me to be a more effective witness, a more effective laborer. Everything I have desired from God in my life today, everything 
and I stand before God, may he forgive me if I'm lying. There is nothing I have desired from God today or desired from vessels, stewards, that is just for personal gain, just to make a name. I want everybody to know that this man is anointed or this man carries favor. Every time I pray, I ask the Lord to purge my motif because I'm human. Who knows when maybe these things can creep in. By next week, we are traveling to the nations, taking the saving, healing, transforming power of Jesus. To what end is that? Just to show that the ministry is expanding? No. Listen, you need to ask the Lord to purify your motive tonight. The reason why many, many people cannot receive impartation, with all due respect, the reason why there are many pastors' conferences you see across this nation and across Africa with sometimes jars of oil being laid on people, the reason why the percentage of those who receive versus the percentage of those who are there are so small is because in many cases, the motif of men is corrupt. From competition to wanting a name to looking for fame, and it's a very human thing. This is why you must cry to God and say, purify my heart, search my heart. Why do I desire money? Is it to outshine others, to look down on others, to buy designers and say I'm a rich person? Why am I trusting God for influence? Why am I praying to be a captain over God's inheritance? Why do I want the healing anointing? So that they call you the next T.L. Osborne or the next Red Hat Bonke. And after that, then what? Why are you desiring the grace for prayer and supplication? So that you end the status of a prayer warrior. Why are you crying for the grace for revelation? So that you have respect to be sound in the word. No. Purify that motif. And then number two, you see, the motif part is between you and God. But honor is your own investment upon the vessel that carries that grace that you will receive. There are many people whose hearts are pure, but dishonor, dishonor. Again, I will charge the body of Christ. We need to manage dishonor. It is the reason why there is a decline in transference of graces. Let's not allow the carriers of these graces to die and go with their graces and mantles because of sheer dishonor. Hallelujah. It is my conviction, based on the principle Jesus taught, that everyone who carries any potent grace should live at least 12 of his kind by the time he's going. Based on the model Jesus showed us, there were 12 apostles, even though one was a son of perdition, but at least that model of 12, it is, it is my personal belief that anyone, particularly in ministry, that by the time you serve and you are living, everybody here and there can receive pieces of you. But people that you invest that grace, if you can stamp that investment of the Spirit upon your 12, then you have done a great job. But we hardly find that 12, as simple as it sounds, Mention 12 Reinhard Bunkers for me. Mention 12 T.L. Osborns. I'm not talking of staff who worked with him. I mean people who embody that grace. Mention 12 Elishas for me. Only one. There were many sons of the prophet, but there was only one Elisha. Do you know that there were many other apostles? The Bible seems to be silent about their own exploits. Why did they become so silent like that? Why are we just talking of Peter, James, and John? What of the remaining? They were not notable enough. I know Bible history captures some of their exploits, but some of them were shockingly silent, yet mentored by Jesus. Let me tell you this. If God grants you grace to be under a very anointed man, your prayer every day should be, Lord, Help me conquer dishonor and purify my heart. Are we together? Help me conquer dishonor and purify my heart. T. 
till today till tomorrow every time God grants me the grace to stand before people who are higher carriers of grace than me world over my heart is panting panting to honor them and my eyes does not even care whether you say this one has limited whatever that is none of my business my eyes is sent like a flint there is treasure that is locked up within them it is not human worship hallelujah praise the name of the Lord you see if you never understand this you will not rise oh you will not rise at all you will be stunted shamefully there were times before we started doing crusades to this degree there were certain ministries and I'm saying this not to brag because I'm I'm teaching you secrets I would sow into certain ministries sow into certain mighty meetings that did not even concern me make sure that my seed was part of it to honor Jesus and in honor to that grace our world today is full of people not doing anything and yet talking about people who are making waves for the kingdom. It is an attitude if we don't change, we're going to go down the drain. A Billy Graham, a Reinhard Bonke, who can speak over 20,000 people, 50,000 people, 10,000 people. It would be foolish to say crowd does not matter. You are joking. At a governmental level when you hold a program of that magnitude it registers the value of faith in nation building there are certain decisions that can no longer be taken because there are evidences you see ignorance sometimes bar is not a very good thing you need to rise to certain levels of influence to know why God trusts men to make certain statements at a national and transcontinental level it may not speak to mean people for want of word, but some of those events directly tell in houses of parliament. There are certain decisions that it will stop because there is influence enough to show the value of faith that it is not a nuisance to civilization. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, is that in your Bible? Because they came out of fire, it didn't lead to any crusade anywhere but it affected the king directly and a policy without consultation came out of that experience immediately daniel chapter 3 the two final verses before god promoting them i can't remember was it 30 or something look for the final two verses of daniel daniel chapter 3 i believe then nebuchadnezzar spake and said watch this as a result of that experience sometimes when god empowers men to hold mighty meetings this is what god is looking for he's not just looking for the men alone he's speaking to kings and institutions and the environment i am still god and that faith still carries value even in nation building this is what nebuchadnezzar did blessed be the god of shadrach meshach and abednego who had sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and has changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve or worship any god except their own god next verse it says therefore i make a decree how did that decree come because of the exploits of the saints I make a decree how many of you know that from a global perspective the world makes data driven policies did you hear what I said data driven policies whether for or against the church there has to be data that shows if you are going to say the church should be left unharmed within a territory at a sentimental level you say I'm a Christian but at a governmental level, leaders lead by data-driven decisions. What is the ratio of believers within the territory? How has their conduct translated to transformation? This is the true idea of revival. Go and study everywhere that God moved across a territory. One of the reasons why the revival was sustained was because it got to those in power and they use that influence with data 
driven evidences evidences of transformation evidences of rehabilitation evidences of character and conduct as a result of the crusades and it brought glory to the name of the lord no territory will be changed until there are great meetings that happen in honor of jesus christ with corresponding evidences change in character increase in moral values are we together crime rate reducing whether it is the fiji island the wealth revival the the various islands across europe america the caribbean everywhere i have studied a number of revivals at a at a national level nobody takes revival serious until they have data supported evidences of transformation from faith so when you see god doing what he's doing he's preserving a heritage for his name and preserving a heritage for our children and our children's children i'm praying that there will never be a generation where there will be data proof that Christians are a nuisance in this territory. The reason is because they sampled one million armed robbers and out of them, 500 of them are Christians. And they say, behold, look at it. Data-driven evidence that the crusades are a waste of time. Based on this data, we cancel crusades in stadiums. This is how the governments work. I'm telling you how intelligence works at a policy level. It is because most believers are very nuclear and narrow in their thinking. They do not know how the purposes of God is established territorially. You do not go and speak the language of the Bible in parliament. You must understand the language of the Chaldeans and know how to present empirical evidence that Jesus is Lord. Are we together? If we seek to see nations transformed, we must trust God for grace. That it will be recorded that from the time this organization, this ministry, did this program, or this crusade, or this sensitization workshop, crime rate has reduced by 50%. Prostitution has reduced by 25%. Data-driven evidences of the power of God. Let me tell you, body of Christ, sentiments will only recycle ourselves among ourselves. When we want to penetrate systems and structures, we need to transport the God life in a way that there can be data-driven evidences of the power of God. Data-driven evidences that it can be proven that everyone who gives his life to Christ and is mentored by a teaching priest their attitude, their conduct positively increases by 70%. Data-driven evidences of the power of God. This is how societies are transformed. That way policies can be enacted non-emotionally that enthrones Jesus. This is what Nebuchadnezzar did. It happened right in my presence as a king. I don't know who the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is, but I desire to make Babylon a great place. And the God who can deliver three people from fire, in my presence, they demonstrated integrity. In my presence, they demonstrated conviction. Even in the midst of fire, they still respected me as a king. Whoever is that God they serve, I want Babylon to serve that God. Therefore, I use my influence as King Nebuchadnezzar I place a policy that anyone who talks against this God, they will be caught in pieces and their house will be a dunghill because from research, not a sermon, I have found that there is no other God who can deliver at this sort. By the time a mayor comes for a crusade, by the time the son of a president comes for a crusade with stage four cancer, and the doctors treating the person is there and the person is healed the machines testify come on now the grace of god listen 
the grace of God is not supposed to end as a fanatic, a spiritual reality alone. It's supposed to find an expression in our world here and now. Are we together? Here and now. It is the reason why we take advantage of that grace to do everything. Whether it is healing on one hand, whether it is medical services to the sick on one hand, whether it is giving to the poor and needy on one hand, if you now take koinonia to the government or the parliament and say proof empirically that koinonia is valuable to the growth of Nigeria, Africa and the world, the people there do not need to be Christians. They just need to be reasonable and just people. The evidences will not be the shouting. Feel free to pick any 10 teachings. Examine the thoughts there. Feel free to look at the things that are happening. Listen, this is how nations are transformed. I'm saying this to you because if you want to see the name of Jesus get to the nations, take away sentiments, take advantage of God's grace, but trust that that grace speaks to the needs of society. Right from infancy, when we started our crusades, there was always an expression of it that ministered to the poor and needy within the limited resources we had because we saw the ministry of Jesus. He taught, he prayed for the sick, but he said 5,000 people. Do you know what it means for 5,000 people to be missing in those days? The government will be saying, let's wait and see. And Jesus said, no, give them enough evidence to take to the powers that be. Sit down, let me feed them. Don't just tell them to go back with a salmon. Give them food. Imagine the women. You know women can celebrate. Thank God for Jesus. Oh. And imagine one of the Pharisees saying, what is that? You people just sat down there and said, no, 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 no. It's not only crusade. We ate. Look at two of my children rejoicing. What have you done since you became a Pharisee? May God empower you. I'm praying from the depth of my heart. May God empower you to be part of those that will bring evidence to the potency of the Christian faith. That when we are looking at data-driven facts and evidences as to why the name of the Lord should be allowed unhindered across the nations, that your contribution will be part of the reasons why the powers that be will allow the program of God unhindered. I pray that for you in the name of Jesus. Now we're going to pray and I will speak an impartation upon your life, but for the next two minutes, I want you to look at every aspect of your Christian life. You know the areas where you've not been able to find the kind of results that should support your growth, your advancement. Maybe you are in ministry and the gifts of the Spirit are not at work in you. Maybe you are a leader and there's shared disloyalty among the people who work with you because that grace is not there. I want you from the standpoint of this understanding, begin to pray and cry. Cry for the graces that you desire in your life available in God's economy. Pray. Let it be from the depth of your, your heart for some wisdom, for some favor, for some power, miraculous power, for some access to systems and structures, access to governmental authorities. Pray. Ubangi jika isaya bo na girma masunanka ubangi ji are you praying nina dau kaka sunanka ubangi jika isaya bo na girma masunanka ubangi ji nina dau kaka sunanka ubangi jika isaya bo We'll raise your banner high, we'll shine your light so bright, we'll sing in honor of you. We'll raise your banner high, we'll shine your light so bright. Yes. 
Father, let me abound in this grace also. I have received the grace for prayer. Let the grace for revelation rest upon me. Let me not just be a prayer person. Access to the mysteries of the kingdom. Someone is praying. The grace for favor. I'm tired of struggling in my organization. Struggling in ministry. Struggling financially. Compromising here and there because of money. Go ahead and pray. Tired of stuntedness. Gifted, but limited because the grace for influence is not there. The hear ye him anointing is not there. Someone pray. I make progress, but my progress is slow. Annoyingly slow. Lord, grant me the grace for speed. Someone pray. Pray passionately. Pray passionately. Pray passionately. Ashalagabaka parakata parakatos. The manifold grace of God at work in your life. The manifold grace of God. Financial grace. Leadership grace, grace for prayer, grace for revelation, grace for influence, activating the gifts of man. These are the graces that give you an edge in life and destiny. These are the graces that give you an edge in ministry, an edge in business. Ten more seconds you are praying. 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 In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. While preparing for this teaching, I was not crying, but I found tears just running out of my eyes. And I began to think to myself, what if I did not know this? What if these graces were not found in my life? I would have been such a frustrated man of God. I probably would have raised a frustrated people lopsided in many ways maybe I would have been a man of prayer with no grace for revelation there would be no growth and maturity or I would have been a man sound in revelation but I would have downplayed the prayer ministry maybe I would not have been able to attract certain kinds of people because the grace that brings kings nobles it's not there. Maybe I never would have been able to bring the lost even. I would have preached all kinds of sermons. And after that you make an altar call and once in a while, somebody who is not sure will just troll and come and stand and be laughing all through while you are saying he should recite the salvation prayer. I wonder how would have been able to fund some of these multi-million crusades across the globe with integrity without putting pressure on people with all due respect you imagine if i had to come here now this crusade is next week and say for instance maybe we need five hundred thousand dollars or a million dollars 
and announce to everybody, come, please, come. The time you would have used learning this thing now would have been manipulation. Anybody who is blessed now becomes you are suffering. You are even afraid of coming. You see how compromises start. The time to learn the word of God is now used for something else. Under pressure, I may start telling lies and prophesying something that God did not say. Not necessarily because I'm bad, but I have a bill, maybe extra 200,000, 300,000 dollars, and you are to meet it within one week. This is how good people become evil people. Not because they were always evil people. They rejected a grace that gave Satan an edge to their lives. I'm saying this to you because if it affected those who went ahead of you, it will affect you too if you don't pay attention. You may be a man of prayer, but the day you need one million for your children's school fees, you will be surprised if all it takes is to just sign that document and only you and, and the director will know. You want, to, you want to stand for righteousness, but you need the money. Your child's education is your business. And before you know it, you and your wife will agree and say, you know what, let's just sign this thing. And you will sign it and for the rest of your life, your conscience will not leave you. But that is what happens. Why follow the way of perdition when there is a grace allocated for it? I'm about to speak over your life. I want you to receive this grace. Receive it. I know what it has done in my life. Receive it. I also received it. You're a man of God here. Yeah, receive it. Don't let pride allow you to suffer for nothing. You are following online. Whether you're a man of God with all due respect. Receive it. Add that grace to your ministry. And watch what it becomes. Add that grace to your business. Add that grace to your finances. Yeshua HaMashiach Yeshua HaMashiach Kominanakane Yeshua HaMashiach Kominanakane Yeshua HaMashiach Yeshua in the name of Jesus I pray for anyone here you have struggled with prayer it's something you can't tell anyone but every time you go to pray you are sleeping you are snoring you watch people pray generating power but the truth is that that grace is not yet on your life I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus genuine authentic grace for prayer let it rest on you now let it rest on you now pastor let it rest on you now businessman let it rest on you now the grace to wake up and pray pray yourself to greatness I release that grace upon you now Number two, laziness over the study of scripture. There is no book you have brought that you've been able to read. You've not been able to read one book of the Bible. You are a sincere Christian. It's been a struggle. It's not by trying. Once that grace is not there, you will struggle. I pray for you. Passion for the word. May it consume you. May it consume you. May it consume you. May it consume you in the name of Jesus Christ. The grace for signs and wonders. Bringing evidence to your Christian work. You're a man of God here, receive it. It takes power to give witness to the resurrection. I pray for you. Fearful evidences of God's grace. Striking testimonies. Begin to experience it in your life. Begin to experience it in ministry. Begin to experience it in your life. Extraordinary wonders. May it be wrought through your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ. The grace that draws men. The gift of men. 
please everybody receive this one the gift of men so that you don't struggle for nothing there has to be a helper somewhere ordained by God anywhere at all where there is a need I tell you there is a helper I pray from today you will not struggle to find helpers you will not struggle to find helpers help us in ministry help us in business help us in your family you will never be alone to struggle alone again in the name of Jesus may someone be interested in your matter may someone be interested in your rising may someone be interested in your shining may someone be interested in your restoration in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you the days of speaking alone and not having anybody listen to you because nobody takes your value seriously whether it's ministerial value professional value business value in the name of Jesus I'm praying for you by this grace that comes upon you now everybody who needs what you carry I gravitate them to your destiny I gravitate them to your destiny I gravitate them to your destiny in the name of Jesus the Bible says "Doth not wisdom cry I'm praying for you the era of foolish decisions trouble-making decisions destiny pegging decisions by this impartation of wisdom may you begin to make superior decisions superior decisions decisions one decision that you will make you will leap five years forward five years forward five years forward in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare favor whether you go out whether you come in whether you are in Nigeria whether you are outside Nigeria may that favor compel men to help you speedily compel men to help you speedily let me pray for your finances in the name that is above all names I'm praying for you may God do something in your life between now and the end of July that will change your finances honestly if you have the faith to believe this may God do something in your life may God raise a man may God bring an idea may God make your proposal pass through by any godly means arise to a new financial status rise beyond the realm of begging rise beyond the realm of borrowing I say it again rise beyond the realm of begging rise beyond the realm of borrowing you will lend to nations in the name of Jesus Christ may my God give you treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places let me pray for you when a season where Satan seems to be cutting the life of people short when people are just about to emerge to a new layer in ministry and destiny they just die like that I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus you shall not die receive it or you shall not die not by sickness not by accident not by witchcraft not by oppression anybody cooking up enchantment against you let it backfire back to them in the name of Jesus Christ I say it again anyone fraternizing with hell that you must die this year their evil returns back to them hallelujah there are people here look at me now I'm not saying going abroad really means anything but there are people there is nothing in your life that has ever gone global not your products not you from your lineage where you come from nobody's head has ever been lifted to a global scale 
At best, you are just recycled here. Let me push you by prophecy. In the name that is above all names, whatever has kept you down, for the name of Jesus and for being an effective witness, rise to a global scale. Rise to a global scale. In ministry, rise to a global scale. In business, rise to a global scale. May your products be global. May your services be global. In the name of Jesus. The giants that sit on every mountain and make sure people don't climb up to the mountain. Once you are at the valley, remain there. But once you want to climb up to the mountain, they say when your father did not climb there, your mother did not climb there, I pray for someone again. In the name of Jesus, for the sake of his majesty, you will be a record breaker. For the sake of his majesty, you will be a record breaker. I, I release that grace upon you. Listen, God who took me from nowhere and by his mercy took me where I am today, I pray for you. May God announce your names to kings. Announce your name to governments. Announce your name to captains of industry. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that fights your influence, fights your relevance, by this grace, it dies here tonight. Yeah. Hear me? Every man of God connected to this grace, every true son and daughter in ministry, I pray for you, for the sake of his majesty, rise to a global scale. May the nations demand your grace. May they honor Jesus in your life. I will multiply them, they will not be few. I will glorify them, they will not be small. I say it again, be multiplied. May you experience the glory of God. Now hear me, hear me, we're wrapping up. My apologies for stretching you, but you'll be surprised what will happen to you. Listen, can I tell you the truth? Not everybody has been mandated to help you. Stop looking for everybody to help you. This is not how it works. And don't choose the person to help you by yourself. You will make a mistake. You will choose in the flesh. But you need one person. I can point strategic people who appeared in my life and brought years and added them to my life. I've seen my own. May you see your own. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Koinonia, go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Advance. Leap over walls. Run through a troop. In the name of Jesus Christ. By your reception of these manifold graces, I'm praying for you. Results you have not seen from January till July. Begin to see them from this night. Results you have not seen from January till now. I say to you again, begin to see them from this night. Fearful results in ministry. Fearful results in business. Fearful results in family. Every negative cloud over your head that is driving good things, driving good people, making you see good as evil and evil as good, I decree and declare, let that cloud be lifted from off your head. Every demonic force manipulating your reasoning, always making you to get into trouble, making bad decisions, I cry unto God again, in the name of Jesus, may your mind be under the influence of the Spirit of God. Superior destiny advancing decisions. Ministry advancing decisions. Finance multiplying decisions. Grace multiplying decisions. 
my final prayer for you tonight it is not a sin to be celebrated it is only when your heart is derailed through it some of you nobody has ever clapped to say Kai I see the hand of God in your life let me pray for you may my God do something between now and the end of the month that will bring strange celebrations to your life in the name of Jesus Christ say after me in the name of Jesus I am a steward of the manifold grace of God say it again I am a steward I am a recipient of the manifold grace of God I activate the graces by faith they begin to speak in every area of my life in the name of Jesus Christ of the fact that you have received this grace also go and write down these graces pray them connect scriptures to them engage certain teachings that are connected to those graces and I assure you by God you will marvel and wonder at the kinds of results that your life begins to produce have you been blessed tonight you need to be born again let's keep standing you need to make it right with Jesus right now for your sake we want to still stay back to make this altar call it matters that you make it right with Jesus everyone who is here scattered within this auditorium the balcony the overflow the many who are falling online it pays to serve Jesus this is the starting point he is the basis for our receiving any grace hallelujah and I want to give you an opportunity to make it right tonight. Two calls in one. For the one who is saying, Apostle, while hearing you speak, all that the Holy Spirit was ministering in my mind is, you need Jesus. That was truly the Holy Spirit you heard. And number two, those who are saying, I need restoration. Even before prosperity, before all of these things, my spiritual life has gone down. I need to make it right with Jesus. I'm going to count one to five. May I request that you pick your bags, your Bibles, and very quickly as I count one to five. Don't be ashamed. Don't wait for anyone to be the first. Leave your seat and come stand here very quickly. One. Let's honor them as they come. They are coming to Jesus. God bless you. Thank you for heeding to the call. Koinonia, let's encourage them. Two. No matter how far you are, come. Connecting online. Be prepared to make this prayer right now. It's a very important prayer. Keep clapping. Three. When I count five, we are ready to pray. If you are coming, please come very quickly. Young and old, male, female, rich, poor, come. Jesus is ready to receive any and everyone. Come. God bless you. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for winning this destiny war once and for all. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. All those who are coming, please make it quick so that we'll pray. Those who are not able to make it, you can just move to the front of your LED screen. And then for those who are making this decision online, please online, you are part of us. So make sure that um, you stretch your hands and pray this prayer while I lead these people who are on site. It matters that we, 
we sought the issue of our eternal destiny and our connection with Jesus. My brothers and my sisters, thank you very much for coming. All of you who have come indicating your interest, it pays to make it right with Jesus. There are three things I taught you that we receive when we come to Jesus. One, the forgiveness of sin. Two, righteousness. And three, his life. Please lift your right hand high above your head if you can. Say this after me to the glory of God. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification right now i receive jesus into my heart as my savior my lord and my king i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever i am a child of god i go from glory to glory grace to grace please keep your hands lifted dear lord jesus thank you for these precious ones and for the many who are connecting online from their homes their offices by whatever device they are using the bible says as many who will come to you you will in no wise cast away they have come i pray in the name of jesus based on their profession their confession that their sins are hereby forgiven in jesus name and I declare that they are bona fide recipients of the life of God, the grace to make progress spiritually, the grace to go forward, I release upon you in Jesus' name. And I decree and declare that the Holy Spirit begins a work in your life tonight that turns you all into signs and wonders to the glory of the name of the Lord. I declare that the power of sin is broken over your life in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Please do me a favor by looking to my right. That will be your left. There are counselors who are waving the placard. Would you do well to follow them? They will have a word and a prayer with you very quickly. And then you are back to your seat. Koinonia, let's honor them very quickly. Let's honor them very quickly. Let's honor them very quickly. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Keep clapping until they go. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you for your patience. Let's continue to pray for our conference. We're just days left. We'll take some time uh, next week to pray um, before we finally leave to go and join the team there. Please pray for us and let's trust God for an extraordinary time. We know that God will bring glory to his name through all the conferences. And remember... It is all of us together by covenant going to do this for Jesus. And so please continue to pray. U.S. we start with, and then we're in Canada, and then we're back by the Spirit of the living God. So let's continue to pour our hearts in prayer and trust God for U.S. I'm having uh, two great people joining me, Pastor William McDowell and Pastor Nathaniel Bassi. It will be an awesome time of worship and the Word, and then... Pastor Nat will be with me also in Canada. And so we thank God for this coming to support what we're doing. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that everything you have received today, may it speak evidently in your life. As you return back home, it will be clear that you met God tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Together let's share the grace in fellowship, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God. The sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life, that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise, I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain 